Let's do a demo of the Good Work application along with the suite of other good applications I have installed on this device. I have chosen to organize my apps in a way where all my business apps show up on the first page and then I have a lot of personal apps on the second page. Now I can mix and match and have all these apps show up on the same page if I wanted to. Um, this is a personal preference. The way a user distinguishes between their business applications is by looking at this uh, padlock icon at the bottom left corner of the business application. Um, that tells that this app is secured by good. Let's take a look at the good work application, which is on the top left corner of the screen. The badge number 38 shows that I have 38 unread emails um, in my application right now. Let's open the application. Right away, you'll notice a much more modern look and feel. Uh, this, is my, this is showing my email inbox. You'll see integrated photos and presents. So the little dots, uh, red, yellow um, dots that you see are showing presents. And the purpose is we want to have personal touch to email. This application is built with the mindset of people-centric collaboration. So being able to see people's pictures and presents allows you to have personal touch to email and allows you to reach the people with the right means of communication depending on their availability. I can click on an email and again you'll see photos and presents all the way through. I can tap on Ann West here and it brings me to a fairly rich contact card. We will spend more time looking through the contact card but just showing that you can navigate uh, from the email right into the contacts module. As a user a lot of times I could be standing in line in a grocery store and I want to quickly triage my emails so as a user um, I'll see very familiar gestures where I can flag my email, trash it, do the long swipe to trash, or I can mark things as red just by swiping from left to right. I can also multi-select emails and take actions on them. So I can multi-select them and move them to a different folder if that's how I organize my emails. I manage my email using uh, the concept of read and unread. So if I read an email, uh, I've taken the action I needed to. If it's marked as unread, then there's still something I want to do with it. So I often find myself in this smart folder of unread emails, even sometimes when I'm sitting in front of my Mac, because it helps me manage my emails faster using, using the mobile device. Other people manage their email by having a policy of zero inbox items, so they typically flag their emails. They can go and look at just their flagged emails if that's how you you need to take action on other things. You can also mark contacts as VIPs and see all emails from VIPs in the VIP smart folder. Similarly, you can see all your high priority emails from this view as well. The email module also has a fairly rich server side search component. So this can search all emails with senders, recipients, subject, body, uh, full body search, um, all done on the server side. So even if you're syncing two weeks or four weeks worth of email on your mobile device, you can actually search for everything that's on the Exchange server, um, which, which is very advanced search capabilities. You'll notice this little launcher menu on the bottom. I can place it anywhere on the screen. Now we did some usability studies and found Depending on you know which hand you hold the phone with, what kind of phone you have, what kind of case you have, um, you're going to want to move this icon uh, wherever you please. So uh, we designed this icon so it could be placed anywhere on the screen. And as you noticed, if after I place it, after a few seconds, it just fades out. So it's not interrupting uh, what you're actually trying to accomplish. If I tap that icon, it brings me to the launcher. The launcher is my business dashboard, which at the top right now is showing me my profile image, my name, and my status as it is in the Microsoft Link uh, client. So I've set a custom message saying I'm demoing good work right now, so that's the status it is showing. In the middle section, you'll see mail, calendar, contacts, docs, chat, and browser. Those are good applications that I have installed on the device. And you'll also see a whole bunch of ISV applications that I have installed on this device. So that's the middle section. It's all dynamic. So it's based on whatever business applications the user has on the device will automatically show up here on the launcher. The bottom section, the plus sign, is a quick actions menu. So anywhere I am, 
I can easily create a new email, a calendar event, a contact, or if I have a note-taking application installed on the device, in this case I have Notate for Good installed, it will allow me to take a note, uh, create a quick note right from here as well. And then we have a consolidated settings menu that we will look at shortly. So let's go into the calendar. Uh, let's start with the month view. So if I'm trying to plan my vacation, I can go and take a look at the month view and, and quickly jump to the weeks of the month where I want to plan a vacation. Or I could go into a week view and take a look at how busy or, or free my week is looking. Or I can go into the day view and actually take, um, you know, look at an event on a particular day. So let's take a look at this sales all hands meeting. Notice how if I scroll up through this event, the subject will, will kind of stick to the top. The purpose of doing that is we want to provide the contextual information to a user. So there's this concept in mobile called the mobile minute. On average, a user will typically spend a minute or less interacting with their mobile device when they're trying to accomplish one particular task. So we want to make sure that we're giving them all the contextual information right when they're taking that action um, so they have everything at their fingertips as they're, as they're trying to accomplish that task. You'll also notice integrated photos and presents in the calendar component as well. So the way we've built photos and presents, you know, everybody's used to that from um, Outlook on PCs and Macs, but we're really the first vendors that have brought photos and presents on your um, mobile applications in a way that has never been done before. So typically you see applications had presents and photos, but we've built it as a service. So anybody in the good ecosystem can easily build an application and integrate with photos and presents. One of our partners, BoardPad for Good, um, is an application that allows you to have uh, to basically monitor and manage executive and board meetings. They have already integrated with presence. So if I go into a particular board meeting, I can take a look at all the board members and depending on their presence, I can start a chat message right from the BoardPad application. Um, I also have a WebEx link in this meeting, so I can easily just tap this link and uh, it will actually allow me to join the WebEx event. The little three dots on the top, you know, we've all been in situations where we're running, you know, five to ten minutes late for a meeting. Sometimes we're driving and trying to scramble how to let the organizer know that I'm running late. Here, with two taps, I can say, I'm running late, be there in a moment, be there in 15 minutes, and I'm done. That message is sent back to the organizer. If I am the organizer, um, I could also very easily um, take a look at all the attendees, if they responded to the event or not. So here I just scheduled this event, so I have no responses. I can choose to edit this event right from here or cancel the meeting altogether right from my mobile device. I could also easily dial into the meeting just by tapping the dial in and um, it will give me the option to pick the passcode. Right from here, I can actually tap on a person's name and it will bring me to their rich contact card. So here, you're looking at Jessica Baker. I've marked her as a VIP. I can see her email, multiple phone numbers, where she works out of, um, her title, what department she's from. A lot of information that is already populated in the global address list is shown to me right here. But the real purpose of building this contact card is to allow people to connect with others um, based on the urgency and the need to connect with the person and the other person's availability and presence. So let's say I have something urgent uh, where I need Jessica's response on, but I can see she's busy. It's not saying she's in a meeting. So I can simply just tap the phone icon next to her mobile and give her a call. Let's say she was in a meeting, um, and it would show me here if she was in a meeting. I can click on the chat bubble that's on the same row as busy, and it will actually bring me to the Good Connect application and let me send a chat message to, um, to Jessica and ask her to answer my quick question. So perhaps she can respond right from there. If it's something uh, that I want to connect with her that could wait, I can perhaps just send her an email right from this as well. This is also an easy way to go and see all the conversations that I've had with Jessica on email or I am right from this history tab. So it's showing me all the emails we've exchanged, all the IMs we've exchanged right from this contact card, which is giving me a fairly rich view of the world. So if you're, if you're often caught in a back-to-back -back meeting 
where you you've forgotten you know what was uh, what was the one thing that you wanted to cover in this particular meeting and you were the presenter you can simply go to the organizer's contact card go to history and get caught up really quickly with uh, with what you're trying to show right from the contact card itself I could also go to the launcher and click on the docs menu. This is a containerized doc, so everything here is within our secure container. I can browse and preview files and folders, so I can go to the white papers and take a look at this document. Um, when I hit the open in menu, uh, you know, you, the user has the option to see the iOS style open in, but as an administrator, I'm probably going to block access to a lot of these applications. And as a financial advisor or a doctor or a nurse, I don't always know what each application means. So what we've provided is a contextual menu that says you're looking at a document, a docx, Microsoft Word docx file. You have a bunch of business applications installed on the device and we know what they're capable of doing. So we will give you the option to take actions on this document. So the actions I can take on this document are I can edit using Polaris or SmartOffice. I can quick save using good share or I can save using box or good share and whatever I pick will become the default the next time around so here let me click on edit it's gonna send the document to the Polaris application it will open the document here I can um, I can add some text at the top here I'll just say hello test and when I say save, it gives me the option to hit save back. So rather than saving in another container, it lets me select another location. I can choose to rename the file if I wanted to. So let's call this version 2, rename, and hit save. If I go back to my document repository, there's my DoD cheat sheet version 2 with the hello test showing up right there. Let's take a look at a few other workflows as, as well. So I'll go back to my launcher and tap on the good for Salesforce one application. This is an application that we built in partnership with salesforce.com. Um, this application is not authenticated, so it's asking me for my touch ID to log in. So I'll, I'll use my fingerprint and it lets me in. If you're familiar with the Salesforce One application, the look and feel will look exactly the same as the Salesforce One app that's in the App Store from Salesforce.com. What we have done is containerize this application so it benefits from all the security of a, of a good Dynamics application. Also, we have not restricted the user. So a user can click on a link and it will open in the Good Access browser. They can tap on an email address and it will send the email using the Good email application. So here I'll give you an example where we'll tap on a link and rather than opening this in Safari, it will open the link in the Good Access application. So this is a link to a file on a SharePoint um, and I can tap on the file and choose to download it. Once it's downloaded, it sends me a local notification saying the file is there. I can take a look at the file and I can open it in other applications. Just like other browsers, you can navigate your history, you can navigate the bookmarks that you have. Um, it provides you a lot of settings, whether you want to get your cache enabled, you want to clear your history, cookies, cache, or credential. It's a very modern looking browser. You can have multiple um, tabs open at the same time. Um, you can create a new tab by hitting that plus button on the bottom left. We've also introduced paradigms where a business user can simply go between business applications. So here I can say back to Caller App and it will take me back to the app that I came from. So a lot of times we realize business users are opening a link from one application to another, but after they're done looking at that link, they want to come back to where they came from. So here I'm back in the Salesforce application. Other times business users will open a link in a browser and they'll want to take some action with what they're seeing. So here I can say, I want to save what I'm looking at as a web clip. I'll give it a name. This is my activations data. And let's say I want to take some notes around this data. So I have a note taking application that's also protected by good called Notate for Good. I want to open this, uh, this page in Notate. So what this will do is open the Notate application, create a new note, 
and I'll be able to take some notes around this particular application. So let's, uh, let's say I want to use text. Let's say I want to increase the font a little bit. And uh, let's just say, hello world. I could also write within this note, add an audio clip. I can add an image uh, from my native camera or take a photo. I can also go and say I want to take another web clipping right from here. All of these notes, by the way, are being saved directly with your Exchange notes. So you can go to your desktop, your PC, or your Mac, and right from Outlook notes, you'll be able to access this. But as you can see, Notate is giving you more capabilities of adding more rich notes, uh, even though it's syncing back through Exchange. So here's a bunch of all my notes. Uh, after I'm done taking notes around that web clip, I can say that I want to either save it to, let's say, my SharePoint or FileShare or other content repositories using GoodShare, or in my case, I'll just say I want to send it in an email. So this will create a new email and attach uh, the note as a PDF right here. Let's say I also wanted to send a few other attachments uh, as you know, to a person with this note. So I'll say I want to add some more documents using GoodShare. Um, from GoodShare, I can access my file shares, my SharePoint sites. Um, I have bookmarked some of these elements, and I've saved some of these files for offline content. So let's just use um, you know, two documents that I have saved offline. One is from SharePoint, one is from FileShare. Add those to this email. And let's send this email uh, to Jessica. And there you are. We just looked at a web page, took some notes on that web page, sent it in an email, and as part of the same email, we were able to attach files from SharePoint and FileShares. So in summary, we just, the, as a user, I just finished a task that involved six different applications. I was more productive taking these actions from a mobile device than I would be sitting on my, on my desktop or a laptop. As a developer, I can reuse all of these components that are being built as services, whether by Good or by other ISV applications. Good has always been known in the industry as the platinum standard for security on iOS and Android devices, and now you can see how we are providing security without compromising usability. Everything I just did does not require VPN on the device or dual personas, so the user experience is native, uh, and we build native designs for iOS and Android. And if you're enabling BYOD in your environment, we can enable one-click BYOD using the GoodWork suite of applications without impacting privacy. So we're also the only vendor that can provide this level of security without requiring an MDM profile on the device. That doesn't mean we don't support MDM. We do have integrated MDM available, and a lot of our customers that are using corporate liable devices or there are use cases when MDM is totally relevant, uh, use our MDM as well. And our MDM platform and the profiles are completely baked in into the Good Dynamics application as well at this time. I hope you enjoyed this demo and uh, look forward to hearing your feedback. <laughs>